the only real sadness, the only real failure, the only great tragedy in life is to not become a saint. Leon Bloy. Welcome to the Everyday Saints podcast, where we learn about the saints as we strive to become saints. I'm Paul, and today we begin a short series on the founding saints of the four major religious orders, the Benedictines, the Dominicans, the Franciscans, and the Jesuits. In each episode, we'll look briefly at the life of the saint as well as the order they founded. Let me be clear at the outset that by calling these the four major orders, I mean no disrespect to the many other orders, such as the Carmelites, the Trappists, or the Salesians. It's simply a fact that these four are by far the largest and best known, and their founders could easily make up a Catholic Mount Rushmore, if such a thing existed. We start today with St. Benedict, who was the founder of Western monasticism, author of the rule that bears his name, and patron saint of Europe. Born around 480 in Nursia, in northern Italy, Benedict studied for a period in Rome, but left the city around the year 500 to become a hermit at Subiaco. So distressed was he over the immorality of Roman society. He stayed at Subiaco for 25 years, attracting many disciples through his sanctity and simplicity of life. After a quarter century at Subiaco, he took a small group of monks to Monte Cassino, near Naples. It was here that he wrote his famous rule, for which he took inspiration from earlier monastics, including St. Basil, St. Augustine, and the Desert Fathers. Benedict remained at Monte Cassino for the rest of his life, and died on March 21st, 550. Benedictines take a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience in community with others, and devote themselves to sanctity and holiness. Their motto is Ora et Labora, pray and work. They traditionally wear a black habit, and some famous Benedictines include St. Scholastica, Benedict's twin sister, St. Gregory the Great, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, and St. Peter Damien. Benedict and his followers did far more than influence the growth of Western monasticism, however. Following the fall of the Roman Empire, his monks preserved Western culture itself by copying texts both contemporary and from antiquity that would surely have been lost otherwise. And they also preserved language, heritage, art, and learning. Though he never intended to found a religious order, and in fact never even became a priest, his order remains to this day and was the role model for many other orders, including the one we'll look at in our next episode, the Dominicans of St. Dominic. St. Benedict of Nursia, pray for us. We'll see you next time.